Welcome to the Mali Talk Show, where Mali and her guests are breaking through barriers and talk about topics close to their heart. We all have this spark that makes us wake up every day and do what we do. The things that I'm doing when it comes to impact female founder, raising strong community, having a fund that invests in diverse team and female founder is a need, is not something that's nice to have. Wow, it's great to be here. Thank you very much. How are you, Mali? I'm great. I'm really good. Berlin is super sunny today, which is special. And how are you all the way from Tel Aviv? I miss Tel Aviv so much. Wow, Tel Aviv is amazing and also sunny as usual. And uh, it has been uh, a while since it was uh, quiet. It hasn't been an easy year for Tel Aviv. But everything here is amazing. So thanks for asking. It's great. Perfect. Uh, you know, also my family is there. So thank God everyone are okay. And, uh, you know, yesterday I read an article about how the, it was a, a foreign uh, article, I think at UK one, and they talked about the Israeli ecosystem and how much they agile, you know, they have the agility to situation. And it was a very, very positive one. And actually I thought about that. Oh my God, of course it is. It's, it was like very natural for me to read that, but it's amazing to see it from the outside sometimes as well. So, Ila, how can I even introduce you? Superstar, amazing, and friend, and mm. a mother, and an entrepreneur, and an investor. Like, everything I, I love and I, I am passionate about, um, you have it in yourself, and probably this is why we are collaborating a lot. <laughs> um, what would you like to tell the audience about yourself before we are starting? Well, I have to say first, I'm super proud to be here, to be interviewed by someone of your colleague uh, and of your class. So thank you for all the compliments, vice versa. Um, I I'm, uh, have been a serial entrepreneur for many, many years, originally a lawyer. Uh, and lucky enough, I was lucky to uh, be the founder of two very successful companies, made every mistake in the book, right? Um but then was lucky to enter my role as a managing director here in Tel Aviv of Techstars Tel Aviv. And a very special hat that I wear is also the female founders hat that we share together in Mali in promoting female founders in the world. So I have a very active female founders organization here in Israel and abroad. So um, I'm very honored to be here to be speaking to you about all these really important topics, the Israeli ecosystem, investments in startups and promoting female founders. So you already sum up, you know, what we're going to talk about, which is great. But, um, you know, something special in you is that the way you manage things, the way you lead things. And I really appreciate that. And I want to highlight that in this talk show today, because we're all about having a role models to, to, to be able, you know, to see it, to become what we see. So I don't know if you remember, we did a, an, an event together in Berlin, and we talked about female investor, and uh, it was purely culture clashes, you remember, like in a, in a positive way, the discussion was so alert, regarding the topic of like how you even dare to dream so big you know before we dive into textiles which is amazing what you're doing there I want you to talk about this as well you remember what you said in this panel regarding stepping into the room with like a big belly <laughs> when you were pregnant uh, look I think uh, female founders have come a long way in the last few years especially thanks to organizations like ours and yours and the global cooperation and network around the world. But I talk about female founders because I think there were three generations that we know today. The first generation was of women who thought they needed to be like men in order to be considered like men. So they tried to create the same jokes, be on the same path, get dressed like men. Everything was very man-like. That didn't work for them too well. And then the second generation was of women like myself who tried to have it all. So they try to be pregnant and raise money and 
uh, grow a family at the same time and try to have the cake and, and use the roles of men and women together in, in one go. And I unfortunately, that didn't work so well because you have to give up on something and sometimes it's yourself. And I think the third generation, which I'm the most optimistic about, is the young generation we see today. You see it in Germany and you see it in Israel. And it's a generation of women who say we're different, okay, uh, but we understand the difference and we recognize it and we are okay with it and this is how we're going to live our lives. And uh, when I was raising money, I was nine months pregnant and it was a difficult, you know, time to do it all. But I think this new generation that we have today and the fact that we're even having this conversation today is a great beginning to many, many new great things. That's a very good point. But can you stick with this point when you mentioned like, I was pregnant and I want to eat all the cake, you know, and still keep it. And, uh, and you're allowed to do it. I mean, you are doing this. But I, you know, sometimes I'm on stage and I said like, I have a friend from Israel that she dared to dream big. And you have a story that you were like nine months pregnant and get into a VC room. And they told me like, would you like a glass of water? And you said, like, I will let you say this sentence. <laughs> I, so I walked into the room and I said, no, I want $5 million. And it was a really funny day because that's when our relationship really started and they became my first investors. And of course, they're very liberal and everyone, of course, laughed. But the fact that people invest money in women that are pregnant is not trivial at all because it needs you know, being bold from both sides. On the side of the entrepreneur, because she's you know, really trying to have it all, but also on the side of the investor because they are trying to um, invest in people that they know, you know, create some kind of certainty for the investors. So, Absolutely, absolutely. And thanks for sharing this. Um, you know, let's go back to Techstars. You already mentioned that you're leading, you are the CEO of Techstars Israel, which is amazing. I'm also very, very proud to be here as a mentor and, and supporting Techstars uh, as much as I can also with network and with brilliant founders. You know, we both know Jack very well as a good friend. And what is actually, um, I would say, the, the the uniqueness of Texas in, in Israel? Because I know that, you know, East, each city, each ecosystem probably also brings something else. Yes, it's a really good question. So I mentioned Texas because it's the most meaningful role that I've ever had actually in actually enabling startups um, to enter the network. And in Israel, I feel that it's even more of a big mission for me because, you know, the Israeli startups are known for innovation, but some of them, um, sometimes find it very hard to enter the, the world just because of so many cultural gaps. And the fact that you're part of Techstars, which is such a big platform for innovation and investment across the world, and that you let Israeli startups go into this network and you actually help them bridge that. I think that's the uniqueness of Techstars in Israel because not everyone can do business with Israelis sometimes because there's such a sometimes a really big difference in culture. And um, bridging this culture and helping our corporate partners that we work with across the globe actually reach Israeli innovation is part of why I'm here. So I'm very excited about that. And I also know you're a great supporter of Textures in Berlin. And, and yes, we're both very good friends of Jag. Uh, and which is an amazing figure in, in Techstars altogether. But everyone who runs Techstars programs are investors, uh, individual investors, private investors. They've also been entrepreneurs, so they've succeeded and failed and actually relate to the stories. And it's really nice because they can really relate to founders, not from an administrative point, but just from being a founder themselves. So they identify with all the differences and you know, the, the big problems that founders have. Yeah. So let's keep the point of being an investor and something very common of both of us. It's really, you know, um, lifting up others, uh, really supporting other women, but also guys, let's, let's face it, you know, we're very, when they're very, uh, I would say talented, I would never say no, because, because they are like, it's a gender thing. Um, same as women, you know, we will invest in those that they are really capable, they are really go-getter and not because of the gender. 
but uh, also being a community leader. You know, you mentioned Yazam Yacht. When I raised in, in Berlin W Launch, I actually, you know, raised it because this is something I dreamed that I had when I started 20 years ago with my first company. I wish I had someone to call and say, can you connect me to this VC? Can you connect me to these corporates? Uh, can I ask you some question about if my pitch deck is even ready or how to even um, address any, any, any pitch deck or any uh, accelerator? Uh, this is at least where it ca came, you know, from from my point of view. But coming back to also Yazam Yacht and a lot of, I mean, eventually it looks like event and bring the right people together. Um, how you define the success of Yazam Yacht? You know, it's like me for you leading companies, asking you how you define a success, how you feel the success when when there is success in Yazam Yacht? So I think generally I, um, what startups, both women and men, look for is connections. You know, people, people succeed using connections and people do business with other people, not with companies, with other people. And the idea is really to... Um, connect them. So both on Yazamiyot and Techstars and my own personal companies, I always try to connect between people and having people trust each other and create, you know, new things and, and, and create opportunities for each other. And the fact that uh, Yazamiyot has partnered with so many global uh, players, for example, Microsoft with an accelerator, for example, Campus for Moms, which was a beautiful project where moms on maternity leave actually come together and actually study together uh, and create startups, a project we did together with Google and we duplicated it in about 13 places around the world. This is a success because what we try to do is we, we try to create as many events. So if we go to Berlin and you entertain us at W Lounge uh, and, and uh, we open the communities and create connections, that's for me a big success because I know Ultimately, fundraise will come out of it and everything else will come out of it. So the idea is for us to form as many um, connections as possible for this. Absolutely. And, you know, you mentioned Campus for Moms, and which I know it because it's actually started to come to Berlin a bit, but it's a huge culture differentiation. And I, and I think in this conversation, we both can highlight that because we both know very well the Israeli ecosystem. I live here in Berlin for almost seven years, so I can say I live it uh, and, 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 and I'm part of it. And on the same time, you know, we see the culture differentiation when it comes to female founder. Absolutely. And definitely, you know, in Germany, women are still thinking about either career or a family, which is something that we're working very hard to show that this is obviously capable you know I always tell them that there are many CEOs in Israel that they have like three kids five kids I mean no one even challenged them or like no one even doubt that they are capable and this is something that I would love you to elaborate more about that to hear from you how you see the female founders um, really succeeding and and getting into IPO even going growing to New York um, coming from the seed ecosystem in, in Tel Aviv in Israel well, I think Israelis have a lot of talent, especially in how they've been brought up. And a lot of the army service really gives them very good tools. And for Israeli uh, female founders to enter successful companies outside of Israel is very simple because I think they have a lot of charisma. And we have uh, so many of those that leave uh, Israel with the mission of actually creating big companies. And um, like I said, there is so many, you know, cultural differences between Israel and New York, Israel and Europe. And I think if they overcome the first barrier, everything else uh, will succeed. And for me, when I was raising money, I also had a really big cultural difference. I, you know, I didn't grow up in Israel. I grew up in uh, South Africa. So when I came to Israel... I had one big culture shock and then I left Israel again to go to the States and I had another culture shock. So I think the fact if you become global and open and listen to other people, the, the more you do that, the more you succeed. It's great. By the way, I didn't know that. <laughs> Thanks for sharing you. We need a talk show to, to learn <laughs> stuff on people that we already know. <laughs> it's beautiful. Um, so 
can you tell me more about the culture shock? Because, you know, I also moved to Germany. I need to have this culture shock, although I'm from a German family as well. But it's still, you know, it's a business culture shock. You know, it's, it's something that you need to adapt uh, and, you to, and, you, and you need to love it to become part of it. Um, so what you can tell, for example, for founders, um, and this is, of course, male founders as well, when they are coming from Israel and, and wishing to grow to Germany or to scale to Germany, but also German startup that uh, right now we see it's vice versa, you know, coming to Israel for capital, but also coming for Israel, to Israel for skills, which is beautiful. And we're both doing this a lot and bridging this bridge. Um, I would love to hear from you more tips to the audience as well regarding this. Yes, so I think it's a big, it's a, it's a, it's a state of mind thing, not really only a cultural thing, but you need to be very wary and open-minded and look at the other side. You know, in Israel, people are very open and they say everything they want to each other, which is not necessarily a good thing outside of the of, of Israel. And even in Israel, by the way, I think I hope that people will become a little bit more wary of what they say to each other. And I think becoming very global and today after Corona, we know that it's very easy to become global. All you need is to just start your Zoom, you know, um, and meet a lot of people and founders. But if you enter a big network across the world and you're open minded enough, you listen to the other side and you know what you're not allowed to say to the other side. Uh, and you listen to what's acceptable and not acceptable in places like Europe and America, and then you become more global. So my advice to founders is just to listen and learn before they go into a different culture. It's not a matter of only what, how you dress. It's a matter of how you listen and what's important business-wise to the other side. You know, someone told me the other day that you could be living in Europe and working with the same person in the same office for 20 years and not know a lot of the things about them because they don't involve sometimes their personal life or their professional life. Whereas in Israel, there is a confusion, like a total confusion of your, of you know, a total lack of privacy for that matter. And so my advice to, just an, a small example, my advice to founders is always, learn more before you enter that market so that you're not doing unacceptable things. Amazing. You know, from my side, I also learned in Germany, as exactly you mentioned, I always worked 24-7. Even vacation with the kids were vacation for work, but on the way we're also going, you know, to some extra days. And And this is something beautiful that I learned in Europe, you know. I learned to not even slow down because I don't know how to slow down, but actually to to manage this in a different way, which I always said, like the German and Israeli are the best combination to build successful companies because we really complete each other, you know, with this attitude of like, let's do it, it will be okay. But on the same time, let's structure everything before we start. You know, it also has to have a balance because some German are missing out because they just wait too long, you know, just everything to be perfect. And it's far away of being perfect, of being entrepreneur and launching a new, a new company. Um, so coming back to being an investor, um, Ila, because you probably screen tons of invest, so, tons of founders, you know, either um, tech stars, either Yazam Yod, either other places, because you also mentor other places and also supporting other people. Um, let's bring some tips. Uh, what makes a very successful founder? What is the, the, the perfect character for investor to screen founder, because I can tell you when founders are pitching to me, it's always about the person, then the product, then the market, then other things. But I want to feel that I like working with this person before everything. I want to help them. I want to open the door for them. So what is your perspective on this? Um, I'm glad you said that because it's my perspective as well. And at Textra, as we say, team, 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 we screen teams. You say first. give back or give first. <laughs> And we give first, but we also, first of all, uh, screen teams. And yes, we want to we wanna make sure that we invest in founders that are resilient and dynamic, but also that they're intelligent, they come from relevant backgrounds. And so as an investor, I always look at the team, especially that I'm an early stage investor. It's not easy to be an early stage investor because you're mainly betting on teams. 
But I can tell you now I'm doing my fourth cohort here at Texas Tel Aviv. And I'm enjoying every second of it because I know that I love the founders that I chose because I know they're ambitious and I know they think big and I know they want to come and change the world. And I'm proud to be part of a network that feels that we want to invest in founders like this. And so what we try to do all the time is screen. And my tip to investors is always go by your gut and bet on, on, on teams. Yeah, trust yourself. Huh? Mm-hmm. So what do you see in Texas, in Tel Aviv? How many percentage of them, how many percentage of the founders really interesting in what's happening in Germany in, in, in I would say in a scale opportunity for the, for the companies? What can you say about this? I think uh, Germany is an exciting and amazing market for Israeli companies. I, and I try to uh, encourage this, but I'm also seeing that there's a lot of interest in Israeli companies to go into German markets. You know, we're very strong with um, uh, mobility uh, and, um, and others, AI, machine learning, deep tech. All these areas are, are super advanced and potential um, design partners are in Germany. So... I am hoping we can uh, continue cooperating and actually mixing the two ecosystems together because I think there is a great potential for both sides here. Yeah, you know, every time I'm speaking about the, the Israel ecosystem, I, I always think like the human capital, you know, my main market when I was like founder in Israel, it was always New York or Silicon Valley. This is, you know, okay, China as well. Uh, but It kind of like the natural way to grow to the to America we feel very at home in America um, but something in the culture right now or I would say in the last three years it's really changing uh, in, a, in, a, in a positive way and a lot of German corporates already having phenomenal offices and great people uh, in Tel Aviv as well and I think it's also contributing I mean the last event that we did actually we brought the, the German Mitterstadt the German uh, corporates also uh, for giving the opportunity for startup to pitch to them to grow to Germany so I, I totally I totally agree with you but I Let's say that not everything pink in any, any part, like nothing is pink in Germany and totally nothing pink in Israel, although Israel is a very strong ecosystem, although it's super small comparing to its impact in a global way. Um, this is, by the way, something I'm bringing a lot here in Berlin, in Germany. Let's break some myth, you know, regarding Israeli ecosystem or like Israel founders. What can you say? Well, I think everything is not uh, pink at all. I think the Israeli ecosystem is a very complex ecosystem. And if you don't know it well enough, it's very difficult to penetrate it. Uh, it's very also hard to find uh, talent here if you don't know well enough where to look. So the idea is to find local players here and actually tap into the network. This is what Texas does and a lot of other people. Uh, oppor- opportunities out there and the idea is I think it's not pink because um, the Israeli like I said the Israeli culture is not an easy one and you need to be able to get these and I would recommend that you do that with people who know both ends of the game so for example you Mali you're a gr- good person to bridge between the ecosystem but I the same as you wouldn't go into a room full of uh, uh, French people and speak in a different language. You wouldn't come to the Israeli ecosystem with the idea of, you know, we're going to find skill or we're going to find talent. You need to find local feet on the ground. And this is what we try to do. Also at Texas, we try to have feet on the ground in many, many places. And one of them is, one of them is Israel. So it's not pink in the sense that you can't just find talent. You need to look for it. You need to scout for it. And you need to find good people to look for it. So would you say that if I'm a German startup and I want to look at the Israeli ecosystem, should I apply to Texas? Am definitely. I allowed to? Oh. Definitely. <laughs> okay. Definitely. Okay. And definitely, I, I, would, I would recommend to any startup to be part of something as big and as um, meaningful as this one. But I also recommend to any um, German company who is looking for talent to actually find people 
scouters and people that know both markets in order to not just land there and look for something, you know, actually, actually find people with an understanding of the market. I want to ask you something because Israel became a big role model in a good way um, fighting COVID-19. Um, everyone asking me, are you not going to vaccinate in Israel? You know, everything is available there and moving forward so fast. Um, how is their tech ecosystem today? How it work with their remote work? You know, we also know that the Israeli people need to feel each other, need to hug, need to kiss, you know, every day when you come to the office. The, the warm, the relationship is very important between the team, between the founders and the team. But how the tech ecosystem really, I would say, react to the situation of COVID-19? I'm glad you mentioned this because I think Israel can be congratulated for a really... Uh, great job in terms of vaccinations and everything is out there in the open and you know people are sitting in restaurants and actually they're opening cinemas this week and you know children are back at school and I think out of our neighboring countries especially in Europe and even the US we've done really well and really quick I have to say I've never seen Israel more determined to do anything in my life and I've lived here for many many <laughs> yeah. years I mean, I've never seen people actually organize so well for something because usually we're not organized at all um, <laughs> I agree. So, <laughs> so I couldn't believe people were standing in lines and then people were making reservations patients <laughs> and vaccinations and, and people were you know doing everything that's needed and people were reading research and Very, very many things that I didn't think the Israeli market or the leaders would be able to do here because I didn't think it was as organized. And, and yes, it was. And I think we can learn from that a lot because this was a data-driven uh, experiment, actually. Time. And I, I think that um, it's amazing because it showed the capabilities. I mean, we always say Startup Nation, it's a slogan, but... It actually became very practical here because we were doing something innovative. And science, which was innovation, actually changed our lives. It changed the world. So it wasn't really slogans anymore. It's like my children got to go to school because science has become so practical for them and because science was put together with business. So I think that's incredible uh, for the world to see because this could only be the beginning of many, many things that we can potentially do here in Israel together with science from across the world and maybe even from Germany. Yeah, I mean, this is the beautiful here, you know, actually the vaccination, at least Pfizer, actually developed by German phenomenal couple. Uh, we talked about them a lot all over and honored them. Uh, but eventually they needed, I would say, a society that's open enough to take the risk, you know, to check it, that everything okay. And I have to say that this week, actually, the restaurant also opened, at least outside in Berlin. So we also starting to feel that it's coming. So, Ila, before we finishing this amazing and important discussion, um, what can we wish, first of all, to ourselves, you know, I wish we meet more physically exactly. in person. 2022, right. uh, hopefully the second half of 2021. And also, I want you to finish with sharing with us what is coming up with Techstars, what is coming up with the Yazamiyot, anything that, you know, maybe you can invite also the German Yazamiyot, which is, by the way, in, in Hebrew, a word of female founder. You know, I'm saying this like <laughs> very clearly, but this is a very meaningful word in Hebrew. Um, What, are, what is coming up uh, and what would you like to welcome, you know, also the German ecosystem in? Yeah, so I think this talk was really important because it talks about global and becoming more and more global. And having uh, friendships like ourselves and uh, cooperating together between the two markets, the Israeli market and the German market, is something I really wish for us. Um, I really wish that we will have um, a lot of innovation And that we will be able to promote both founders in terms of tech stars and become more global, but also female founders in particular. I want to do that because I feel they um, uh, need to be very much more promoted. And um, because we are the ambassadors of She Loves Tech, a big organization for female founders on both sides. Which is sides. also in Berlin. 
and W and Lunch is taking is... part this year, which I thank know. you for mentioning that. <laughs> yes. And so W Lounge and the Azami is also part of something really, really big. And if you ask me what I wish for us is I wish for us to have more globalization and more cooperations between the markets and helping promote innovation because at the end we can talk about innovation all day long, but it's uh, for example, COVID-19 was only beat because of innovation. And our life, it depends on innovation. Our own mobility, our hospitality, everything that we do really relates to innovation. So we're touching the most delicate things. And we're sitting here between two ecosystems that have so much to do with each other. And I wish for us to um, partner more and more. Fantastic. There's nothing to add on this. I want to thank you for coming to my talk show. And I'm already inviting you for a phenomenal breakfast near the ocean in Tel Aviv and it's on me. <laughs> Thank you so much, Ila. <laughs> Thank you. This was a pleasure. Thank you and to all your team and you're amazing. Thank you, Mali. Fantastic. Thank you. Thanks a lot for sharing everything with us today. Thank you.